Hello and welcome to another E5 Group podcast. I'm your host, Dan Jackson, aka Dan's the Engineer, and I'm joined today by David Watts. Hello, Dave. Hello, mate. See and you. Paul Meenan. How are you doing, Paul? Hello there. And we're going to tell you all about what the E5 Group is. So we done a video like this a long time ago, so we thought we'd put it on the podcast. And so we get this... Ages, ages ago. ago yeah it was a good three ages years ago. ago now yeah that's a long time ago man that was a long time ago i remember i remember the actual conversation where um i think it was you you it was your idea to do the what is a e5 video is a bit of an inside scoop and you said to me sit in your car or do something where you just film yourself answering a load of questions and send yeah. it to me yeah that's and I it, sent right? it to your whatsapp and then you just did your magic with all of your um <laughs> no. this, drum this and bass is... music and this is it, Paul. You, it was one of the first times you filmed yourself. It mm. was. <laughs> and I had no idea. And that raw footage was yeah. filled with me with lots of expletives going, I feel really weird. This is very strange. Um, <laughs> and I think you asked me to film. I, I can't remember if I had to do it once or twice. But, I think um, it was about five times. It was about five times, yeah, probably. It, <laughs> I weren't great. Um, but Dan managed to edit a car wreck of me sitting in my car looking like a complete loon to my neighbours um very concisely and then that became the what is e5 video and uh, that was the start of the trolls and the oh look you're another cps and oh look here's another badge for competence uh -huh. la, la 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 and it's just it's nothing mm. like that at all so for the purpose of people who are listening who may have never heard of the e5 group before mm -hmm. what is e5 how do you sum it up okay um Dave, feel free to jump in anytime but um from my position uh it we're not a formal business we're not a not-for-profit. We're not a charity. We're not a limited company in any way. We may be in the future, um, but as it stands now, I think as a group, we've kind of grown together, emerged together, and developed uh, a set of principle, which, which is the statement of ethical principles, that the whole group and the whole logo came from the statement of ethical principles published by the Engineering Council, so please go away and read that um, so you can find out more about what we are and the values within it. Um, and we sat down and we were like, well, OK, what, what do we want to contribute? We, we're now like a, a gang of mates. There's five of us. Um, we call ourselves the founder members because we're the original guys who went, yeah, this document's really good. And the industry has to improve. And the five guys are obviously you're the founder, Paul. Um, yeah, I'm David, Watt, David Watt, Sparky Ninja, myself, um, Dan Jackson, Ryan Dempsey and Paul Skirm. So there's the five originals. Who are, yeah, so Ryan and Paul are busy tonight, otherwise they'd be on this, but that's fine. Mm. That's how we roll when we do our podcast, although Ryan may jump in. You never know with Dempsey. And we do have an open uh, call for all of them to jump in if they need to. Um, obviously, we've been uh, joined by lots of other people as well on that adventure, John Ward and, and others. Um, uh, Lee Ward, no relation, obviously. Um, Adrian Davey and others um, who are very much valued, but... For us, it was taking that document and not using it as doctrine and saying, do you know what? This is a really good document that nobody really knows exists. Why don't they know it exists? And uh, you, go on. <clears throat> I've got a question then. Go on in. Because I was, you know, I was in the group when you did that video, but we didn't actually, you know, it was just you two. So there was a bigger group for a period of time and it got shrunk down. And I believe I was the last of the five to be pulled into this five. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it was. All right. So this that's, that's, be, that's because you was hiding, Dave. I was hiding. Yeah, in all fairness, so, you were hiding. Yeah, you were. What was it about? What was it, okay? Without kind of not, you know, you know, trying to like blow smoke up my ass or anything. What was it that was the reason why I was suitable? I needed to be brought it's into simple. it, and then we decided. I, I fell in love with you the minute I saw you. I had <laughs> to get hold of you. I couldn't have enough of you. I just wanted to cuddle up to you. Your warm right. manliness. No, no, um, no. Please don't sue me for that. Sorry, go. It was. It was the the content you put online, Dave, um, yeah. as Sparky Ninja. Right. And it was sort of highlighting some really interesting points about the electrical industry, saying how it's broken and what needs to be done. And obviously you was anonymous at the time. And mm -hmm. I remember watching your YouTube stuff because you commented on one of my videos and I was oh, like, yeah. who, who is this guy? And, and I watched like all of your stuff and I was like trying to track you down online, trying to find out who you are. And then I found you on LinkedIn mm. and, uh, 
I remember this. this. You I... found me. You found me on LinkedIn, and when I went on to YouTube, I found that you could receive messages, and I found a message from you that was like six months old when I finally found messages on YouTube. I also found one from Tom Nagy. They've shut that off, I think, now. Yeah. DMing on YouTube. Right, okay. I had a good old message from Tom Nagy. I had one from Dan months after it. But yeah, so um, I got brought into it. And then we, you guys, having had some experience with other characters, decided that that's enough. Well, it, there's a little bit... Five, there's but, a little bit more to it than that, Dave. Yeah? So um, for me, it was... Um, and I use this term a bit because one of the nicest men that I've ever known used it. Um, sadly, he's not with us anymore. Um the one of the reasons why um, I looked at you as uh, a phenomenal addition to E5 was the conduct of your character. I know it's a term that sparks don't use much, but mm. the way you portrayed yourself in your videos, the passion, the integrity, the level of detail, the, the analytics. The, no, no, the analytics. Yeah, yeah, ignore the effects. Um, <laughs> and the mechanisms of which you took something dry, drass and boring and made it accessible to all at any level was so heartwarming and so fulfilling it was a natural um with the four of us with our skill sets and our knowledge we had it was a natural thing to ask you to come and join and contribute your talents to to share and improve us and i'll be honest with you years long gone by i have every single one of you guys in my brain in various scenarios so if i'm at work talking about fire i'm i'm not talking as paul i'm talking as dan fire dan or i'm having a conversation with dan if I'm talking about education sector, I've got you in my brain. Mm. If I'm talking about compliance or business, I've got Ryan in my... If I'm having a technical argument, I'm literally sitting in the room going, no, no, don't be silly, no, <laughs> no, because the directives say no. Um, and that, I see as such an armor-plating um, uh, uh, skill. It's enhanced my own central abilities, my own knowledge, my own confidence, um, and I've always said that the best friends are the ones that you respect and who bring something to the table, not the friends that just go, hey, buddy, and then leech off of you. And, and I, I've taken something from every one of you guys. I'm not giving it back, um, <laughs> but it's, it, that's what kind of attracted. When we first started, we had a WhatsApp group. It was a car wreck. Mm. I think we should just leave it at that, to be honest. It was a WhatsApp group, a car wreck, and it was a lot of complaining. Um, I don't want to upset anyone who's listening to this. It wasn't conducive or positive or with action it, it it just wasn't right for what we were trying to do and i i just took stock and stepped back i went no 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 the the guys who are doing this need to not be in this for themselves in any way this is a bigger thing and that's why over time we've agreed that anything we do as e5 is voluntary it's not paid we don't take any money for it it's that in itself is a demonstration of commitment and passion to give up our own time and efforts while still trying to juggle family and business life. Um, using the statement of ethical principles, as I've said when I created that logo, that circle of continuous improvement around that statement, there is not many people who have, and let's be honest about it, section one, honesty and integrity. Sadly, people are going to go mental for me saying that. Fucking hell. In this yeah. industry, I'm telling you now, I've met so many wankers who don't have honesty and integrity and just lie through their back teeth rather than telling the truth. Please don't take that as a character assassination of the whole industry. Respect for life, law, environment, and public good. Yeah, Accuracy and rigor, leadership. This document would never have been written if there wasn't a need for it. Because this is not a massively old document. This was introduced for a reason by the Engineering Council. So by putting that at the centre and, and, and it, it naturally coming from Section E5 of the uh, Engineering Council's competency framework, and, and for those listening... If they're wondering what the Engineering Council's competency framework is, if you Google UK spec for engineering competence, you will find a document that has an A to E criteria. There's 17 criteria in total. And the very last criteria introduced, I believe it was in 2007, was E5. And it was demonstrate ethics in an applied manner. So when you're becoming professionally registration. Regis regis registered INC and your eng tech, you have to be able to discuss and identify how you would apply ethics in the workplace. It's called E5, that's what we were named after. Okay, but the statement of ethical principles is the detailed explanation of how you would do that. So, maximize public good, minimize actual and potential adverse effects, uh, take account of uh, availability of resources, uphold standing of profession. That's in section two. Um, challenge statements or policies that cause you professional concern. Section four, leadership and communication. So I saw that as something that didn't have to be with the 
you know, the high and mighty engineers or the chartered folk. This is something that apprentices could learn, engineers could learn, um, electricians, teachers, trainers, people managing it. And it says in the document it's aimed at every single person engaged in engineering activities. So when I first thought about it, I thought, well, if we use this, we can promote the document, we can promote um, a better level of upskilling in your knowledge and hopefully in your applied behaviours. But soon after, I, it, it kind of became obvious that we had to do something if we were going to go on as a group together. And that's where we then sat in Coventry and said, look, if we're ever going to become something, we need to have a vision or values or our pillars, as we called them. Um, and that was when we decided on influence, inspire, inform. And Dave, as I've said before, you were the one who came up and said, look, we're going to do this. We've really got to support people and educate people because that's kind of the root cause of where most things in our industry have gone wrong. And that was our five pillars. And you look at them now. I've got them as my screensaver. <laughs> we can do that. We can influence people with our right behaviours. We don't have to call ourselves influencers. I can't stand that word. You know, I, I don't. Know. Um, we can inspire people by achieving things in our personal and professional lives. We can inform people with facts. We can support them if they need an arm around them or just a voice um, that will listen to them or talk to them. We can educate them. That's within our skill set. Yeah, we're, we're trying to do the right thing around that document, and I think that's a good thing. So going back to the video, first of all, yeah, and you described what E5 was. Yeah. Is it a different description now? Is there a change? Yeah. Yeah, what well, we didn't, have, we didn't have the visions and values. In the video, E5 was pretty much, um, if you wear this badge, you're promoting a statement of ethical principles. We hadn't developed or emerged to the point where, as a group, we sat down and said, as a group, we need to do things around a, a focused vision. Uh, it was a matter of um, wear a badge to promote the statement of ethical principles and, and effectively tell us that you'll abide by it. OK, that's what mm -hmm. the initial vision was. Bit pants at the time, but it was it was something that took off massively. It, it was something, and we used the hashtag E5 on the social media, and that was to it, way I explain to people is you can help promote E5. It's just obviously what you do day to day, and um, it's about raising standards, using ethics within your work. Yeah, and if if you stand for that, you promote E5. You can use the hashtag, and obviously we started sending out badges that you pay for yourself, Paul. I do pay for uh, every single one, yep. Yeah, every single badge Cost that's been out there fortune. has come out of Paul's pocket, literally out yep. of Paul's pocket. <laughs> um, and um, it, sometimes people request a badge to become a member, and mm. there can be a lot of people being a little bit um, impatient because they don't get a badge, you know, because we get so many emails. But do you know what? It's, it's just one of those things that we do this voluntary, a, we don't make any money out of it, and you know, money has to be a part of whatever, even though it's out of Paul's pocket. And some people have even said to us, you know, if you took some money from people, if they could contribute something, then we can grow into this bigger thing. Yeah. But obviously, mm. amongst us, we've decided has, that. Yeah. I have that, had yeah. I have had offers of money from people before, and I have always said the same thing, and I'll say it on this podcast: if you want, if you feel like, um we've helped you or we've done something for you you want to contribute go to your local college give them some equipment give them some of your time if you really want to make a monetary donation give it to the electrical industry charities i think i've said that before to a number of people yeah. uh, and, and just use our name in the reference i don't care but i don't want money near us and i know loads of people hate us for that but uh, at the moment that's the nature of the beast i mean in five years time i may end up being a consultant and if I'm a consultant, I may call my company E5. Why? Because it's my brand. I own it. Why the hell not? And in fairness, I'll take some of that money and pump it into buying more badges and more stamps. Why the hell not? Um, but it still will. I will still be able to keep the two separate because consultancy is a consultancy. And E5 is always going to be about influence, inspire, inform, support and educate voluntarily helping. We, we've over the last year, especially, uh, I think it's fair to say we've agreed that education is something we can we can definitely influence and inspire. Um, it's fairly evident from all the colleges we've been to around the country, there is a mass, a mass shift needed in the knowledge and understanding of how FE works and the support that the college lecturers need. How do we attract and retain talent into that sector? How do we also go to the bigger, and if we dare say it in this podcast, the Pandora's box of how do we address the elephant in the room that is the city and guilds and the awarding bodies 
Um, I, th- I would genuinely say they need to come to the table at some point and say, you're kind of ruining our industry. Well, I may be having a little chat with them in a week or two's time. You may be, because I think you're going to a conference, aren't going you? To, going to a conference, and I'm not going for the tea and coffee. No, you're going no. there. You're going there, fixed by an <laughs> but, um, It is. Oh, it is. I mean, we, we've seen qualifications redone, rewritten, scrapped and relaunched, and we've seen trailblazers brought in. We're seeing T levels brought in now. Um, <clears throat> there are organisations trying to develop, develop some level of structure in these qualifications, uh, but there are too many different interests from different areas, different angles, different so- ends. There are some people who have said to me over the last few years, especially, why do you do what you do? Sometimes, I mean, like there's one clause, uh, not knowingly mislead or allow others to be misled. Reject bribery and improper influence. Respect confidentiality. Declare conflicts of interest. We know that there are conflicts of interest at at all sorts of levels in our industry. Yeah. We challenge it. We call it out. Um, uh, We're we're a bit bit more mature now. We do it a bit more privately. (laughs) <laughs> um, it's fair to say, um, but we we still do it. We won't use the the, the wonderful world of Twitter and stuff to uh, spill our guts anymore because. It's... And I guess it's important to mention that because if ever there is debates or things on Twitter that we do agree with or we don't agree with, we don't necessarily voice our opinions because we keep off of that platform. Yeah, as much as we can. Yeah, it's um, too it's too damn toxic know, to honestly. It is, and it's um, it's there's no there's no time to actually get in on with that. And, that, and that's also another thing as well for those listening. Um, if you have ever messaged us, a couple of bits. Um, today I was on the phone apologising to somebody um, because uh, I made some mistakes in the uh, past going going back a while where I made some tweets in my own personal um, Twitter account which were probably a little bit facetious and stupid and, and of course, wrongly worded. It was passionate. Worded. But yes. it was it was wrongly. Yes, it was wrongly worded, and I, I apologise today, and I have made hopefully up with that individual, and have res- come to a very respectful conclusion with that individual, and we're moving on together in the right way with the right um, relationship. So not even I get it right all the time, and I'm happy to admit that. But the one thing that has happened, what we noticed, was the website was a disaster um, because for about a year, all the requests we got didn't go anywhere. They seem to just got lost in the ether. So I've had loads of people going, oh, I wrote for membership. And I was just like, well, hang on this. We're not a formal membership, so there's no membership. It's, And then I realized, hang on, we need to sort this out. And so now if people wear the badge, we call them an affiliate to the main group where they they, they are basically by wearing the badge, they're supporting the main group's activities. They're also committing themselves to that statement of ethical principles. That's as far as it goes for now. We've also had um, some organizations, companies, um, bodies or whoever, say that, you know, sort your members out because people who are saying obviously they're E5 members um, have, you know, caused a bit of a stir one way or the other, whether it's on social media, and we're looked at as if we're responsible for that. Yeah, I've had, listen, I've spent the last year of my life being told, sort your fucking members out. And I I always love the silence when I say, but we're not a formal membership organisation. I'm not their mother. (laughs) I can't tell someone what to do. I'm not their mother. I fully respect everybody's views and opinions. However, I will work to realign someone's views and opinions in a respectful and private manner if they are wrong and misinformed. However, if they're misinformed, we as an industry are misinforming people. So you can't exactly blame passionate people who may not have all the facts in front of them. Yeah, that's Um, true. It is true. Um, What can we say now about what E5 is doing? What are we allowed to say? Um, we, I'm we, asking we, you that question. We're um we're creating a CPS. Um, no, I'm an uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You've spilt the beans. Um, I think it's fair to say that just, we are just so that people are, know that we are doing stuff. Yeah, so yeah. we are taking yeah. steps to build some bridges. I, I would say that's fairly evident. I think now we'll leave it at that. Yeah. We are trying to plan some more events with further education college. I mean, Christ, I did four last week. Mm. So um, we have we did we did discuss this just last week the idea. I mean, this is just an idea of maybe doing a in the next academic year doing some kind of tour with FE colleges. As you say, we going we keep going back to FE. Um, FE does need to evolve. I'll go back to City and Guilds and the like. We you know if we keep delivering training on two plate, three plate wiring systems, whilst you know if the apprentices go to an exhibition they see kinetic switching, wireless switching, all these new innovations, new technologies, that stuff needs to get into FE. We start, you know, we need to start evolving FE and also just fixing it. 
Um, so that's something we have considered. It's fair to say, I think we we are we are spending a lot more time talking to manufacturers, um, but mm-hmm. that's more of professional engagement, advising them, mm-hmm. um, having pleasant and mutual discussions more than anything else, not being sponsored by them or anything else. Mm-hmm. Our, our podcast, we had our first manufacturer on it um, the other week. Um, we've got more manufacturers coming in who will offer their technical expertise, not their sponsorship. Um, I think as it stands, um, in all fairness, there is an event, and this will be out before then anyway, so everybody will know. On the March 31st, there is a conference at the IET, which um, is about the competency issues in the industry. And I think it's fair to say that um, I've been quite busy sorting that out in amongst doing free university lectures, <laughs> attending I, I, colleges. By the way, it's only I, March. I won't be there. You won't be there. Dave <laughs> has voiced his concerns on Twitter for the world to know. And I think um, that resonated amongst the ivory towers of the I IET. Think, think, yeah, the IET heard. <laughs> the IET heard the ninja quite loudly. Um, I, I think it's oversubscribed, although I'll probably get in trouble for saying that. Um, it's it's oversubscribed, but it's supposed to be a small, intimate conference where they they talk. I have no idea what I'm going to say. I'm chairing a panel on competency. Um I'm to be honest, you'd be more than likely just to stand up and talk from the heart. Um, I don't care who's there. Nobody will tell me what to say. I will just speak from the heart. Um, I will, however, be very polite and professional because I'll be wearing a shirt and tie. So it will be um, best foot forward in front of MPs and all the rest of it. But I will do my best to represent and, and make sure that the, there is a message resonating around that room. Um, yeah, we're quite busy. By the way, I have a day job. I also have a day job, as we all do. Um, but yeah, there's probably more we can do. But it's, I think it's right time, right opportunity, um, because like the Bristol think, thing. Do you, do you think on, we need to be doing more though? I mean, we're always doing, Stuff. we're always moving forward. We're always making new connections. We're always making new opportunities. I don't, I don't think we need to. I don't think we. Yeah, I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to like you know punish ourselves for not doing more. I think we're doing more than enough. I think we are. Um, I think the hardest thing for us is actually getting us all available at the same time, isn't it, really? Coventry oh. and X is our one yeah. mecca. Um, yeah. You think podcasts would be easy, but that's a struggle at the moment for all of us. Yeah. It is. Well, in all fairness, that's the beauty of having multiple hosts and stuff. It is, yeah. It's who can be available at the time. Um, we know we've got loads of people we're lining up to do stuff, so I'm not too fussed. Go on. And, Paul, what's the purpose of the podcast? I've no idea. It's just us chatting, isn't it? No. Um, so the purpose of the podcast is is part of that support and educate, isn't it? It's the um, it's the thought pieces. It's the technical bits. It's the more God. We've recently done one on bullying. Um, we've just recently, by the time this is out, everyone will have heard it. One on um, depression. Um, I don't know if the alcoholism one will be out by the time this one is out. Um, but yeah, we there are more thought pieces. It's one of the things I found when I was working by myself was the one thing I missed was having a peer to sound off against. So when you went to the wholesalers, if there was someone in the room, you all would kind of like gauge the conversation in the wholesaler, wouldn't you? You'd kind of get involved. Next thing you know, three hours of your day is gone because you've had a really good chat with someone in a wholesaler. Mm. And I thought to myself, do you know what? If we're going to do these podcasts, um, loads of people can do whatever they want in their podcast. But I thought we do talk some really technical, weird stuff. So why don't we just record that? And hopefully um, we've we've had messages from people who've said they've spoke along with it. They've disagreed or agreed with what we've said or they've thought in different ways because of it. So hopefully you're listening on a building site somewhere on a van. All mm. I can say is thanks for listening to it, really, because we never expected anyone to listen to these. And I think we've had quite a large volume of people listening to these. Yeah, no, none of the podcasts are scripted at all. We just choose no. a topic. We we obviously have a few people on um, it, out of the E5 group. It's it's just whoever's available. And obviously we have co-hosts, which could be people who we talk to. Um, we've had some you know, co-hosts recently, Richard Emery, uh, yeah. Louise Taggart. Um, so Richard Emery has done, um, he's got one coming out on the importance of confined spaces mm. for electricians, which blew me away because I did it with him. And that totally okay. blew me away. Um, to be honest with you, but I think we've I've got a little bit of that. editing to do on that. I've listened to that, and I like that because I was I was testing um, rising buzz bars just last just two weeks ago, and I was in the buzz bar chain. I was uh, in in the rising main. I opened the door, and suddenly when the door was open, I had no actual method of egress. Mm, you know, and I was it. working on an energized panel with no method of egress. 
you know it's just, it's just went oh crap okay um so, it's, so there's, yeah, a, there's, there's a bit of an open invite for anybody who wants to get involved we, we basically talk about the electrical industry it could be technical it could be um just viewpoints it could be some social issues that we've spoken about recently um any anybody's welcome aren't they yeah we're on all we're on all platforms is there a preferred way to contact us about appearing on this podcast yeah i think the email address has got to be the best way to be honest email address. otherwise it gets lost because we've all got access to the instagram so if one of us sees it we may forget and then it gets lost in the ether so info at e5group.org.uk if you email us on that and then it becomes a central email that we can all look at and even you've dave have pulled me and gone if you responded to that email oh yeah no good point i haven't done that um yeah. so that is probably the best way um i know we've got i'm just waiting on some dates for other people but we've got a couple of ladies coming on other ladies in the in industry um one who is practicing an electrician and the other one who's a, a female engineer mm. um, uh, and she does um, major power engineering in rail um so i've been um talking to her so we're going to go grab a coffee in a couple of weeks time and sort out a date where we can do a Skype call. And one of the best female engineers I've ever worked with. The woman is just an absolute Rottweiler. She's a fantastic woman. Um, so we'll have her on soon as well. Um, it's, there's a fair old queue, I think it's fair to say. But it's just logistics of diaries and who's available. And I think the yeah. more of it's available that make that person welcome is good. But again, that doesn't mean if you're not immediately available, we can't fit you in next week. It's a case of when everyone has availability. Yeah, so I've, 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 I've got a few topics. to your interest. Yeah, I've got a few topics on fire to do with a few people as well. You have got fire. a few. And, and that's another thing as well, is is it shouldn't just be me going, hello, everybody, and welcome to, um, which which is all great and Danny, because I can do it verbatim at a drop of a hat, as we are doing tonight. But yeah. well, um, I've, I've got a training series to carry on. I'm going to get yes. Popper Watts, Mr. Popper Ninja in to do someone 7909 and someone yes. training. Nice. Also do someone thermal imaging, someone arc flash, and some other little things like that as well soon. And we also need to do some podcasts for the Sparking Ninja podcast because it's our yeah, sister podcast. Yeah. Bro, or we'll could we call it our that. auntie podcast? Auntie podcast. Or granny podcast. <laughs> you were the first and the originator. And may I just say for the record that your um, podcasts were not rips of your YouTube videos. But no, actually, your podcast, no. your podcast actually started as actual <laughs> podcasts. And then yeah. someone asked you to rip the audio of your videos into those. But so we'll we'll probably record a couple on one night, and then it'll just be a Sparking Ninja one rather than an E5 one. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because all of your ones can go. All of all of these will go on your channel anyway. You've just got to take the audio and do what you want with it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so this podcast is not owned by all of us. It's owned by the industry. It's whatever the industry wants of it, and I think that's really really important for people to get into their heads. It's 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 by the industry for the industry it's not just a practicing electricians one it's it's a everything and anything the industry needs or wants it to be um i think that's fair to say i suppose we we're almost like um an impartial voice of the industry which could literally be anybody somebody in the industry called, um us and i like the term the social and moral consciousness of the industry mm. um which i really like um Mm. The trouble is, is that's ever evolving because and again, yeah. we all know it's ever evolving. And again, I mean, it's like we had a, you had a request yesterday from someone wanted to come on, but he said who he wanted to come on with. He wanted Ryan to come on, I think, with yourself. You know, yeah. you can you can choose, you can come on with another colleague as long as it is suitable content. There's no swearing, etc. You can bring anyone on. No swearing. Request, you know, well, hang on. Yeah. Well, well, I'll have to cancel certain, some of mine. Then. Certain, <laughs> hang on a minute. I I meet in these, and occasionally I do let a, a, an f bomb drop, but I forgive myself because. They're ours. It's us. We're mates. So if, apologies for my language. I will work on reducing the level of F-bombs in these podcasts, but I am not going to do a, um, you know, um, I don't ever swear, la, 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 like certain people do in social media I'm world. I'm talking about profanity, which you know what I mean. Oh, right. OK. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That filth. Yeah. No, we won't. We won't accept I'm, outright filth on this I'm, um, content. Unnecessary noise, basically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. White noise. Unnecessary noise. No. And I have to um, apologise if you've listened to me on a podcast before because I've only just got a proper mic, so the sound is actually all right. Whereas before it was pants. <laughs> yeah, you were shit on your former podcast. Oh, you, you can't swear. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you were terrible <laughs> on your podcast. Sorry. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We're all learning. But, uh, I'm wearing yeah. jeans and a t-shirt, so it's okay. Um, right. I'm shirt and tie when I have to be on my best behaviour. Um, but yeah, no. So E5, I think, is going to be something that is ever evolving. But as ever. 
we will keep you up to date. Um, as it stands, I think the next few years are just about working with industry bodies, building a relationship, acting almost as a, 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 a voice for the voiceless, dare I say it, um, a voice uh, for the people with a voice as well, even trying to represent views and 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 helping the industry bodies improve, helping the industry improve, educating the learners, making people realize that this this industry can be fun and also helping people who are up against some of the most awful employers known to man, because there's mm. so many of them out there. We hear the horror stories. Um, in fairness, I'm I'm quite lucky in respect. So, you know, I'm in a client role, so I don't have to implement those horror stories on my contractors, although they do get a bit freaked out by it. Um, yeah, I'm, I think we're just an ever evolving thing and, I, and I'm OK with that. I'm perfectly OK with it because I'm not bound by a terms of reference or a rules and conditions sort of thing. It's it's trying to abide by the statement of ethical principles if you wear that badge. If you don't, I will find you and I will rip it off your bloody chest. <laughs> and I've said that to so many people. Yeah, yeah, I will find you. Yeah. Um, I will literally, I will, I will literally, because I've spent my money on that badge and that thing, and I'm not going to have someone, if, if, I, if I find out somebody who is, um, you know, misleading others or, or, or just being a complete and utter cock womble of biblical proportions, um, then I will find them and I will literally go up to them and say, send me the badge back, give me the badge. I've had quite a few um, people come up to me uh, or approach me um, asking E5 to get involved in things which are clearly for their gain, usually financial gain, um, manufacturers being one. And um, yeah. I mean, it's easy to spot a mile off, but it's not about that. Obviously, yeah, we think we're done. Yeah, and we, we speak to a lot of managers and we, we uh, managers, sorry, um, manufacturers. And it's just because we have an aligned interest, I guess. I, know, think, I think the is. biggest challenge is, is um, We've done some stuff, for, some stuff for manufacturers, but they never sponsored us or paid us for it. I've always yeah. said that one of the things that we should be doing with our skill set, look at Paul, and also I've got some of that experience, but not to the level of Paul, um, is helping manufacturers with their products in, in one, their actual compliance and, and how they actually benefit the hearts and minds and the safety and the technical competence of the users. Yeah. We know that some of the manufacturing literature is wrong. It's false it's pants and we also know that they're not doing enough to educate the electricians and every time I go to a college or Dave goes to a college and we talk about arc fault or this that and the other people always go but why are the manufacturers not telling us this yeah I think that's the key thing is I mean manufacturers can take part in this and we'll take part with manufacturers as long as the conclusion is the betterment yes or the improvement for the industry so I'm the same with sparking injury in that yeah. I won't say oh send me a product I'll review it for views I'll go to me product if i can then use that product to better the training and the information that i could put onto the channel for every viewer yeah um you know it's like i i didn't have a multimeter or power supply and chauvin our new contacted me um i said well i i'll, I'll receive that because i can then make contact with that uh, contact with that further down the line but i've had so many other people approach me saying could you do a view view on this could you do a review on that you know no not not the interest so the interest, i got the other day you got there so tomorrow morning, I am giving away my mega to a young lady um, who approached me on Twitter um, and basically said, um, because this, this, so I, mega have promised me a test kit for three years. Yeah. And I got to the point where I was just like, yeah, 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 whatever. They've mm. now sent me the MFT1741 plus, which is awesome. So Dave, we're going to have a play with this. That's better than mine. I know. I'm going to, I'm going to play with that. So my old mega kit, which is still the nuts in a steel case and everything else, um, I literally mentioned it on Twitter and this young lady emailed me and said, I'm a third year um, uh, college student. I'm just um, coming close to finishing it. I'm desperate to learn the testing and, and do stuff. Is there any chance I can buy it off you? And and she, she messaged me like six times um, in a week and I thought, fucking hell, this woman's really persistent. So I just messaged her back and said, look, what, what do you want? She went, look, what is it? And I told her what they were. And she went, look, um, if I could get some money together, can I give you like 150 quid for them? And I just thought, you know what, sod it, they're yours. So tomorrow yeah. morning at 8.30 at Fenchurch Street, I'm meeting her to give her the... Um, Your mega. Kit. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that's fine. Nice. I have no problem with that. It's nice to be nice. It's nice to be nice. It's I remember on my... Sit in my shed... 
on my group last week, there was a lad who had a test kit he didn't need mm-hmm. anymore, and there was a person who was going to give it to, but he couldn't afford the postage. So a third person yeah. paid for the postage. Well, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, um, our, our friend, um, um, SOS electrician, Paul, he um, gave me one of his old Metrells, had it all recalibrated, and then I found someone on Twitter, and he was a second-year apprentice, and I so drove... Isn't that, isn't that Sean? Sean. Did I call him Paul? Sean. Oh, it's because the same name as my brother. No, I'm no, sorry, Sean. No, you just said SOS. SOS, yeah. Sean. Yeah, Sean, yeah. Yeah, he's ba- he basically lives Sorry, off Discord about my server, brother, doesn't he? He does live on the Discord, bless him. Discord. Don't hate us for saying that, Sean. Um, but he gave me a, a calibrated Matrell, so I went on Twitter, I found someone, and then I drove to Chelmsford to just hand it to him and say, there you go, enjoy it, have fun, try not to make yourself too much. Um, then, Sh- Sean was on the uh, on Discord just help- the other day helping a lad out with his 2396 very giving people that discord server is full of incredible it's like your group on facebook so if anyone's in the facebook sparking Ninja group very helpful people anyone who's not gets pumped straight away from that group but mm. the discord server is like the next level it's like a room full of nic area engineers and super smart boffins all talking on this discord server and the levels of conversation when i go near it i'm like oh well, that's wow. the point. You know you're in the right room when you go and you go, oh, you don't need to do anything. It's like every Questions, night answers, is... Every, and you learn. You yeah, learn every night it. is like a design and verification project in general chit-chat. <laughs> it's yeah. off the charts, man. It is so intelligent. It's hysterical. And you can do GIFs and you, rather than doing thumbs up, you can do like E5 or logos or, 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 or C1, C2, C3 um, logos. It's really cool what Dave's built in Discord. So, um, But again, it's very well policed it's a complete experiment just a bit of fun but actually it's turned into a very really nice little place it has so how do we um ask people to support us what do we do make your checks out to um paul meenan <laughs> um which would be really nice although i'm skinned um no how do we ask them to i always say the same thing to people um if you want to donate something donate it to a college whether it be your time or some spare equipment or materials we don't need it. Do you need a conduit bender? No. Do you need you need you need half the stuff you need? No. This test kit, I'm going to be using this with Dave. We're going to do some filming and stuff. Um, I've opened up my railway to various other manufacturers if they want to experiment and do some filming and stuff because if it helps them with their product development, why not? Um, but I've said to people, if you want to support us, support us with your behaviours. Our industry, we know this from our time in sites and employers, is very toxic, very downtrodden, very miserable, very cyclical in the way it just, it just people drag each other down. So yeah. I'm going to say, that. I'm going to say people can follow us on social media. Oh, sorry, that's your job, Dan. Us. Social media, Dan. man. So sorry, Dan. I keep Instagram, <laughs> the E5 group. Um, we've got Twitter, E5 group. We've got um, a Facebook group as well um linkedin you can follow us on there but also we've got a youtube channel and if you like any of the content it helps us if you share our content across your social media so others can see it as well which massively massively helps us i'm really bad at this aren't i I i'm really bad at the whole flying the social media flag i I think this is why i'll never get a silver button or be an influencer but i don't care either way um sorry dan yeah so um (laughs) People can also support us by following us on Twitter, Instagram, sharing our stuff on social media. As Dan's the engineer, the social media master, has schooled me once again. I'm so sorry. Um, but I, 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 I do say, rather than follow us on social media, I always say you can follow us by just fo- following in our behaviours. Yeah, it's true. You know, improve your own behaviours. Contribute with your the conduct of your character is the best way to contribute. That's and, it. Yeah. And also share those behaviours with Others. peers as well, yeah, and sort of shout about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. I've had Most I've had certainly. a couple of people like ask me the same question. I'm always like you, Paul. I never I never say like, subscribe, share. I'm just really bad at that. Yeah, we do. Um I we what I normally would say to people is, you know, you, you come, you maybe want maybe a lot of people come to like the group etc. wanting an answer to their problem. They've got a problem. They come try this group, or they, you know, they find an answer. And I was like, right, if you wanna, if you wanna help, then just stay put, sit, listen, learn, and let you know. Look, I don't want to say it, but level up again. You know, just improve yourself. Help us by improving yourself. You know, 
what one of um the reasons i started dan's the engineer and started posting stuff online was simply because i was so fed up with coming across my competitors if you could mm. call that a quoting work against me but they were never fulfilling the same level of professionalism or technical ability and what i started doing was helping them level up helping mm. educate them they were pricing a hundred grand fire alarm tenders getting the work and they would get the work opposed to me because they weren't actually doing it properly so i exactly. helped i helped them technically so we were on the same level playing field and it raises everybody then and everybody you wins. heard of that before until you told me that i never heard of that and i thought you know what you you have done something incredibly rare in business which is helping your competitors level up but you're absolutely bang on right i mean i've worked on major project tenders where they're like 50 60 million pound and I've seen the tenders coming back in and there's like 15 million pound difference between them. Mm. And immediately you just think either we've screwed up on the tender packs or somebody's not read anything and it just throws everything into confusion. Yeah, well, it's exactly where the level up hashtag I use comes from. Fundamentally, if we support others to be competitive with each other, to actually level up their technical knowledge, they're going to start respecting themselves more. They're going to start working to a higher standard than the one that the industry has set them. And they're going to start wanting to represent that value by charging more, being more competitive, and hopefully more will do the same. And eventually there will be a divide, which is a lot more obvious between yeah. those that have come up to a higher level and those that have stayed down below. And the clients will start to see that difference. Because right now, obviously, it's just badges, badges on badges on shirts, badges on vans. They don't yep. see the line. They don't see the divide. If we have guys who are much more competent, much more confident in their ability to assist clients compared to those that will be a little bit more uh, nervous, a little bit more um, not self-confident, there will be a line. There'll be a clear line. And then we're going to start seeing an improvement. Yeah, I agree. Yep, totally agree completely. <clears throat> I'm just um, I'm just are doing you, some basic are you, checks. Are you, are you typing? Or I typing? am sorry. I'm doing some basic checks here. I do apologise while we're doing this, <laughs> but I'm just trying to do because I don't. As Dave says, we're really bad at all this social media stuff, um, and I am absolutely awful at it. So I'm just going around now, literally adding up all of the um, people who've listened to this podcast because I need to. I want to finish it by saying thank you to every single person who's ever viewed this, which. Well, it's well, well literally, like... it's thousands, isn't it? Yeah, isn't well, it? if you if you two just chat for a few more seconds, I'll I'll have this all finished. All oh, right, he'll have, it's... he'll have. Okay. Plus, <laughs> sorry. Very, very professional. Sorry. Okay. So you're you're he's just typing away, and we'll just we'll just fill some void space while we have some noise. Okay, we'll... so um, not, not not that type of noise, Dave. Holy cow! Right, so just across um, YouTube alone. Um, 16 and a half thousand views of the podcast just on YouTube. Wow. Add to that another 18 and a half thousand on podcast providers. Wow. So, yeah, that's pretty much 34,000 people. So, we need to finish this by saying thank you very much, 34,700 odd times. So, <clears throat> <laughs> thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you. No, we are we are very grateful for anybody who's listened to the podcast. Um, yeah. So is that a lot of yeah. people? Is that, yeah. is I don't good? know. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I have no I'm really, idea. I'm, because I'm, I'm really bad at tracking so things. Um, Dave, do you know thirty thousand people? I mean, no. no. So it's, it's a lot of people. Percentage, it's still a percentage of what's in our industry. Um, the trouble is, is it, it would be great is uh, over time people share this with their apprentices because this is going to become a repository of knowledge. And I think that's something to be proud of. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it, it, podcasts are great for listening on the way to work, on the way home. Um, you know, just like audio books and stuff like that. Instead of listening to the crap on, you know, Kiss FM or anything like that. You mean this talk is, about viruses and all that rubbish to scare Yeah, them. yeah, exactly. This is something actually, you know, that you can benefit from because sometimes there's some CPD, isn't there, guys? Yeah. I maybe. don't know what that is. <laughs> In fact, maybe. we should do a podcast about CPD, what it is. <laughs> CPD. Let's, yeah, let's All actually right. do a podcast on what CPD is. Let's wind this okay. one up and do one on, on, on CPD. Me, I'll just go and Google CPD, and then we'll come and do a podcast on it. Okay, fine. I've got all the info. Um, chaps, thank you very much for joining us. Everybody who's listening and who's listened to them, this is just a bonus episode. Um, yeah. um, thank you very much for paying attention to us. We really do appreciate it. Let's just let's just uh, say if you're on, well, if you're going to email us or if you're on YouTube and you want to 
do, do a comment and just let us know if there's anything more you want. Look at the podcast we've done. Let us know if there's anything else you'd like out of these. Mm. We can either go, no, or we can go, oh, Well, we right. could do ones where we just talk you know. casually, or we can do yeah. ones where we do some serious research on these. Yeah. Um, I know they're the ones normally where we get John Ward in, and John Ward just schools all of us in his wisdom, and we're all too just, we're blinded by his brilliance or his tracksuits, depending. Um, but, yeah, no, we'll, we'll do, he's got some awesome tracksuits. Um, anyway, right, Dan, any final thoughts? I'm just um, very proud of what everybody's contributed, not just like the five members, but everybody who contributes to E5. It's and great. I'm proud you finally got your finger out and bought a proper microphone. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. awesome. Good job. It's awesome. It is awesome. It is. Right. OK, well, there you go. So um, thank you for listening to this um, bonus episode called What is E5? Um, until the next one, we hope you're enjoying yeah. what you're hearing. Uh, yeah, um, until, until we update it later on to say what E5 is in a year or two's time, because, you know. You and hopefully, know. It, hopefully it clarifies what E5 is and what we're doing. Yeah, I've no idea. What we'll have to do, <laughs> we'll have to do is maybe, maybe at the end of the year or next year, we'll do it. What is E5, but predict. <laughs> I have some ideas now, actually, um, but I can't say them because oh. we have a tendency of having all of our ideas stolen from stolen. us. Stolen. Yeah, there's a podcast in itself, although that would probably have to go through lawyers before we ever released it. That'd be fun. Um, that would be that would be an interesting one. Very stress relieving anyway. Right. Um, chaps, thank you very much. Um, we'll do some more bonus episodes. Um, for everyone listening, take care of yourself and each bye -bye. other. Goodbye. Okay,